to come away with two wins in a row, that tests your character also. Like, how are you gonna respond? Are you gonna, you know, feel like you've arrived or are you gonna approach it like, hey man, our job is not done. The Broncos are looking to make it three in a row as they welcome in the Philadelphia Eagles. And we are getting you ready for kickoff. Hello, I'm Phil Milani alongside Sidney Jones and Eric Dalala. Guys, the Broncos are coming off one of their best performances in the last five, six years maybe, Eric. Can they repeat this thing again, Sydney? Let's start with you. Absolutely, Phil. I mean, why not? I, I think this team has been capable of performing at that level that we saw on Sunday all season long, quite frankly. And I think head coach Vic Fangio said it best. You know, you have to be addicted to winning. And I think this team is really starting to feel that and starting to see that. And I don't know about you guys, but I think on Sunday, for me, I saw – a new energy and a, really a new focus from this team and I don't think that drive's going to go away anytime soon so I, I'm thinking this weekend they're going to head into a good spot heading into the bye hopefully six and four heading into this bye. Well based off the way the Broncos played I think it surprised all of us uh, considering our score predictions last <laughs> week guys. Uh, Eric, uh, can they do this again? Well, uh, I think it's possible. You know, that was probably the best we've seen of the Broncos. And while I think it's definitely something that they can do more consistently, maybe not at that level every single week. And I worry a little bit about the injuries this week. You know, Pat Sertan might not play, which means that Kyle Fuller, who played well in that nickel position, is now going to be thrown in potentially as a starter. And then on offense, you've got three offensive linemen who could potentially miss this game. You know, and so I just wonder, can the can the Broncos keep that same sort of consistency with some guys having to fill in? I mean, they're hurting. Sydney mentioned the bye week. The Broncos need to get this win and, and get there. But this is a team in the Eagles that, if you're going to keep it going against anybody, it should be them. The Broncos season has been kind of weird, right? Three wins in a row to start, four losses in a row, and then maybe three wins uh, uh, in a row here. The Broncos uh, were up 30 to nothing on the Cowboys for a good chunk of that game. Uh, four minutes left maybe is when the Cowboys finally got on the board. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater talks about doing that every single week. You know, this is a time in, in sports where, you know, it can be dangerous. Um, you know, just a couple weeks ago you were hearing, oh, you guys suck, uh, get rid of this person, trade this guy. And then you win a game or two and it's like, oh, you're the best, this and that. And, you know, man, you got to ignore it all because in this game, man, there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. On the offensive side of the ball, guys, uh, the Broncos found a lot of success on the ground, rushed for 190 yards against the Cowboys. It was Melvin Gordon, it was Javante Williams, both doing it. Uh, you think Pat Shermer says, let's stick with the hot hands here? I think he will, Phil, and quite frankly, I hope he does. I mean, even head coach Vic Fangio, he talked this week about the importance of sticking to the run. You talked about last weekend, the performance they put up, getting uh, you know 190 yards on the ground, but also the Broncos got 12 first downs by running the ball. So, you know, I think as a whole, this offense is better and more balanced when they run the ball and, you know, opens up the play action as well. It's led to wins this season. Our friend uh, Jeff Legwald looked this up. He said, uh, when the Broncos rush for 28, or when they have 28 carries in a game, they're 4-0 this season, Eric. So 4-0 sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, a little misleading, I think, just because when you're winning, you can keep running the ball, and when you're behind, you got to throw the ball. But I do think when you stick with the ground game, you kind of exert this physicality. You've got to, you know, you run it down their throats. You, you take advantage of the other team and, and really exert your will. I think that's what the Broncos did at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, really, against the Cowboys. I think they can do it again this week because even though I mentioned those offensive linemen who are missing, the guys who could fill in, like a Quinn Miners, if it's him, and a Tani Muti, the run game is their strength. You know, those are physical guys that I think can beat people at the point of attack. And so I'd like to see the Broncos uh, continue to run the ball. And like Sydney mentioned, the play action game, that's where Teddy Bridgewater has been really good. I don't think you want him throwing 35, 40 times a game. If he can stay in that 25 range, Broncos are going to be hard to beat. And you keep Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense off the field. They can't score points. Uh, I think that's a recipe for success. Yeah, set the tone, yeah. and then it also sets up the big plays because uh, when the Broncos have hit on some of those big plays, it's been a big difference in the game. I mean, Tim Patrick's 44-yard touchdown, that was a, a, a big play in that game against the Cowboys. Here's what Pat Shermer had to say about if he's going to stick with the run game. You know, we hit on some things. Certainly, you know, we're, we're happy with the results. Um, 
been doing this long enough to know that each week is a battle and each week's different. I, I spent 13 years in Philadelphia, so I know how they're wired. And this is going to be a heck of a defense. Uh, starts with their front four, but this year they're playing much more five on the line than they have in previous years, which is kind of in jam fronts. And, you know, they have ways to stop the run to make you throw it. And uh, so it's going to be a challenge for us. Broncos have a, a big opportunity here to get to the bye week at six and four. After that four game losing streak, six and four would sound pretty sweet at this point. Uh, but the Eagles, a little misleading here. They're three and six, but they're a better football team than that, huh? I think so, Phil. And if you look at some of their losses, a couple of those are only one score games, really. You know, this Eagles team is, is in a transition right now. And I think they've started to find their groove offensively the past couple weeks as they shifted to a more ground based attack. So I think they're getting their footing. And I definitely think this is a team that the Broncos shouldn't overlook, especially given the fact that all of the games they won were on the road. So they're, they're certainly good when they're away. Yeah. And Teddy Bridgewater said this week that the Broncos have not been particularly good at home. So you put right. those two things together, could spell trouble. And I don't think, uh, Eric, the Broncos are really good enough to overlook anybody at this point. Yeah, I mean, just a few weeks ago, the Broncos had lost four games in a row. They lost to a Cleveland team that started Case Keenum. I mean, the Broncos need to have their full focus on the Philadelphia Eagles, or else you're going to let this one slip away. Like you mentioned, Phil, they're just not at the point where they can look at any opponent and just assume it's a win. And that Eagles offense in, particularly, in particular is going to uh, have some issues for this Broncos defense. You know, they don't turn the ball over. They're good in the red zone. They're good in third down. And Jalen Hurts is a guy that Vic Fangio said might be their franchise quarterback. They've certainly posed some issues, but I will say they've played their best football over the last couple of weeks. Some of those losses that they had to the Bucks, to the Raiders that maybe looked close, a lot of late touchdowns there kind of in garbage time. But you look at what they did against the Lions and the Chargers last week. They played some good football. Yeah, and like Sidney mentioned, they're running the ball a lot more now. Jalen Hurts, their leading passer, obviously, but also their leading rusher, too. And uh, you mentioned what Vic Fangio had to say. Here's his full uh, soundbite when he met the press this week. Good quarterback. It's the first time I've watched him, prepared to play against him, and I w I've been very impressed. He's um, got a really good arm. He can be accurate, and he – Obviously runs their zone read stuff where he's in the gun and can pull it and run it. The RPO game, you know, he's very adept at both of those. He did, did it in college and they're doing it now. Great scrambler, uh, big arm. You know, I've, I think they have their quarterback. I, I've been impressed by him. Time now for our favorite part of the show, score predictions. Sydney, let's hear it. I'm going to go 27-17 Broncos. And I'm hoping we're a lot closer this week than we were last week, guys. Yeah, you said 31-10 last we week, Sydney. I'm not gonna. I, that kind of caught everybody off guard, including some of the fans. I know. Uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, your score? Yeah, I'll go. Um, let's say 27-21. I think it'll be a little bit closer. Kind of reminds me of that Lions game uh, back in 2019, where Broncos were a better team, but kind of struggled to put them away for a while. Maybe a, a late score by the Eagles makes it look a little bit closer than it was, but I do think the Broncos get the win, get to six and four. Okay, couple of wins, I agree. Let's make it a clean sweep for the Broncos. I say 31 Broncos. You love the 30s. Wow. That's a lot of points, huh? And then uh, let's say 24 for the Eagles. I do think that they've figured out some stuff on, on the offensive side. Jalen Hurts, uh, maybe a franchise quarterback here, and uh, they're starting to figure out things. So I think more of a high scoring game here. I don't know. We'll see. All right, that's going to do it for us. For Eric Dalla and Sydney Jones, I'm Phil Milani. This has been Ready for Kickoff.